Hi everyone. So it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I've just been crazy busy with all kinds of projects and such. Um, one thing is the Demystify Your Medicine Coven. That's been pretty fantastic. Um, you can go to the wildwoodapothecary.org to read more about that. But um, so I have this rule that some of you may know that like when I think about making a video, I make a video. Like I don't sit there and just like, oh, well, maybe I should, maybe I should. The second it pops into my head, I do it. And this morning that occurred. So here I am. <laughs> um, yesterday was the um, kickoff of our rose hip season. Um, and since it's been about a week worth of um, morning frost, it's just about perfect to get them. Um, and so here is some of them. As you can see, there's quite a lot here. Um, we try to do between, I don't know, five and ten gallons every season. Um, but we do live somewhere where rose bushes are very problematic and even though they're native to here, they've almost become very aggressively um, invasive because other plants are dying back. But they're just, they're just doing their job and filling where they can. So today we're going to make a rose hip tincture. Um, and that is so simple. But first I want to tell you why we wait until the frost comes. Because there's a lot of really amazing riboflavins um, and other nutrients in rose hips that are doubled once frost hits them. So once their skin gets wrinkly, I don't know if I can, if it'll focus on this or not, or if you can see it, um, but this is all wrinkly and they're a little mushy. And I know like a lot of people would be like, oh, that means they're bad and they've gone bad. And we like to get them when they're nice and shiny and red and the foliage on the roses is still alive. But actually, if you wait and learn to not be so squeamish about like the life that uh, death can give us, um, you will get more nutritional medicinal content from rose hips. Um, so a tincture is super easy. I'm going to take an empty jar and I'm going to fill it full of rose hips. And I've done that already. It takes a little bit of time. Um, so you'll notice that on mine there's a little bits and pieces of stem and leaf and that's okay because basically all parts of the rose are edible and I actually find that it makes um, a little bit more of a whole tincture. I try not to have too much leaf in there but generally just what comes off with um, our berry rake. We do use a berry rake. Um, and I don't use a berry rake on huckleberries, which is how you can like Google that. Just Google huckleberry rake because I find that really unethical. But I do use them on rose hips because by the time we're harvesting, all the foliage has died back or is dying back. Um, and so I'm not damaging the plant by using, um, it's like a little rake. That's, it's kind of like you sweep it up the branch and it pulls them all off. Um, and that's how we are able to gather a lot. Um, we also don't take more than 30% mm, off of any large bush, so there's plenty um, left behind for the wild critters. But I mean, if you're using like a rose that's growing in your yard and you don't have a lot of um, wildlife, you don't really have to worry about how much you take off of that, in my opinion. Um, but all rose hips are safe and edible and medicinal. Um, the only thing you want to make sure is that you're not gathering from roses that have been sprayed or anything like that. Um, or, you know, are in parks or, or you've been used as um, basically a urinal for dogs. Consider stuff like that um, when you're gathering. So you've got your jar full of rose hips. This is super complicated. Are you ready for this? You take a hundred proof vodka and you dump it over the top. Now, the reason I use Hunter Proof, not anything stronger, is I want my tincture to be ready to use as soon as it's ready to use. I don't want to have to do a bunch of complicated math. Uh, and a Hunter Proof vodka is 50% water, 50% alcohol, which is the dosage you need to just be able to take drops. You need to know that it's an exact dose. Um, but also, when you use a Hunter Proof alcohol, that means it's 50% water, like I discussed there. Uh, and that means that you are going to be getting some water soluble properties out of these berries that you wouldn't get otherwise um, from um, like over 100 proof. Like a lot of people like to use Everclear and stuff like that. Um, which means that I in turn, hello Sally, she opened the door to came to visit, which, um, and Charlie, which means I in turn um, will have a, a more balanced tincture, a more whole, a more nourishing. Um, and then we take a cap. I always forget the cap, <laughs> um, but I have one up here. Let me find one. Um, and then you just simply um, cap it. 
and then pretend like I have a pen here, and then I'm gonna write with a sharpie on top of this um, what it is and the date, and I'm gonna set this in a cool, dark place, and I'm gonna let it sit for about eight weeks. Now, a lot of states don't have 100 proof vodka, so you can use 80 proof. Um, and then when you do that, there's still no math that needs to be done. I just want you to let it sit for two or three weeks longer than um, the 100 proof. Um, and that is how you make a rose hip tincture. It's that easy. It's just berries in a jar, vodka dumped over, and cap put on, cool dark place for 8 to 12 weeks. So, ta-da! It's easy. Alright, well, I'll see you next time it pops in my mind to make a video. Bye!